What's going on, smart people? In yesterday's video, I talked all about Lagrangians and Hamiltonians and how they're basically equivalent to Newton's way of formulating things. And when you first encounter them, you jump straight to a seemingly complicated system, like a double pendulum, and solve it pretty easily. And you sort of skip over what you've already learned how to solve. So in today's video, I'd like to show you how to apply Lagrangian formalism to introductory physics problem, more specifically, projectile motion. Now, you, you might be tempted to say something like, isn't using Lagrangian mechanics for a simple projectile motion problem where you're not introducing air resistance kind of overkill? And Absolutely it is. It is extremely overkill, but I think it's necessary to see that you can still apply it to something this simple. And I think if you have seen it somewhat applied to projectile motion, more than likely what they did is they wrote down the Euler-Lagrange equation and said, these are the equations of motion, and you're like, I'll take your word for it. Cool, so we are going to be solving a projectile motion problem in a completely unnecessary way because we can. Hey, smart people, coming to you from the future, there's one thing that I didn't really make clear throughout this video and I wanted to elaborate. Uh, the whole point is to show that whether you start with Newton's second law, so uh, that would be F equals MA, or you start with the concept of Lagrangian, Lagrange, Lagrangian, you can solve these kinds of projectile motion problems the same, but the end goal for both of these is to be able to write down the kinematic equations. And then you can use these to specify, you know, whatever special case you're working with. So we're writing down the Lagrangian for a projectile motion problem, and then working our way towards showing that we can still get here. That's the goal. Let's next see you next in the clip. Let's go ahead and draw out what exactly we're solving. So let's keep this to two dimensions, two degrees of freedom. Here's our little projectile that is in motion. This is going to be our y-axis, and this is our x. That's what we're solving. We're finding equations of motion for this. A couple prerequisites before we get started. You gotta be familiar with the idea of a Lagrangian being kinetic energy minus potential. Uh, and you gotta understand the Euler-Lagrange equations. Understand's not the right word. You gotta know what the equation is. So that means being comfortable with partial derivatives. Okay, so the definition of the Lagrangian, which I write with a curly L, not to be confused with like a Laplace transform or something, um, is, like I just said, the kinetic term minus the potential term. Okay, and the Euler-Lagrange equations are in terms of certain types of derivatives of this quantity. So the Euler-Lagrange equation is as follows. It's the time derivative, d dt, of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized speed, okay, and that is equal to the derivative, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the generalized position. Okay, that looks pretty weird. Um, really what this is saying is we're making no assumptions about the form of our coordinates uh, that the Lagrangian depends on, but really it's going to boil down to x's and y's. So let's go ahead and write out what our Lagrangian is for the system. We're ignoring air resistance, so the kinetic energy is still just going to be our 1 half mv squared, and the potential energy is going to be our mgh. Okay, so Lagrangian is equal to one half mv squared minus mgh. This is assuming that gravity is positive. Okay, and we're going to want to express this uh, velocity in terms of um, derivatives of our generalized coordinates. So, and that's because uh, the Lagrangian is a function of the generalized coordinates time derivatives as well as the generalized coordinates. Okay, so expanding upon that, that tells us this is just one half m. Well, velocity is just the time derivative of position, so it's gonna be x dot squared plus y dot squared. Whenever you see a dot on top of a coordinate, that means the time derivative was taken, so it's not some type of displacement derivative. Okay, and minus mg, and this h, well, the height is just going to be bound by the y-axis, right? So this is just mgy. Okay, so this is our new definition of the Lagrangian. And we're going to have two equations of motion, two or the Lagrange equations describing this, or in terms of this Lagrangian. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of bookkeeping. I like to take this part first. So the first or the Lagrange equation is going to be written in terms of dl 
dx dot. Okay, that's this term here. The first generalized speed is going to be x dot. And that is equal to, if we take the derivative of this, if it's with respect to x dot, this might as well just be another variable. You could, so it's just like taking the regular derivative of, say, like x squared. So this 2 comes down, cancels with that 2, and we're just going to get an m x dot. Okay? Same thing for y dot. dl dy dot is equal to m y dot. Let's go ahead and take the time derivative of this. So we get d dt dl dx dot is equal to the time derivative of this quantity. We're holding, I mean, mass doesn't depend on time. This does, so this just gives us m x double dot. And uh, really what this is, is saying is this is just ma. Go figure. So extending that to the y term, we get d dt dl dy dot is equal to m y double dot. I think you see why we might call this a little bit of overkill. So this is a fancy way of saying f equals ma. And now we just need to tackle this term. So this is just in terms of the generalized coordinate, not the generalized speed. So that becomes, where are we? So we got dl dx. So this is our Lagrangian, dl dx. x itself doesn't show up anywhere, so the derivative with respect to x of this is just going to be 0. We have an x dot, but that's not what we're taking the derivative with respect to. And we also have dl dy. This term goes to zero. zero. Again, there's no explicit y dependence here. This term does, so the derivative of this with respect to y is minus mg. Okay. And now we can go ahead and write out our two Euler-Lagrange equations. So the first one is going to be uh, d, where are you at? m x double dot, because that's our d dt dl dx dot, that's this term right here. This is equal to dl dq, so that's zero here. And then the second one, we get my double dot is equal to minus mg. Dividing both sides by m, assuming the mass is at zero, we get x double dot equals zero, and y double dot is equal to minus g. Cool. We just showed that the acceleration in the y direction is due to gravity, and that there is no acceleration in the x direction because our projectile is not being pushed. It's not being propelled by anything. And looking at these Euler-Lagrange equations, that's normally what they call the equations of motion. I think that's a little bit unsatisfactory. I think it might be a bit more helpful if we solve these differential equations. It's not like it's going to be hard to do. So even if we just look at this first one right here, um, integrating both sides with respect to time gives us that x dot is equal to some just constant, right? Uh, so if x dot, x dot is just some generalized speed, and we're saying that it's a constant. And what that tells you is that if it's always a constant speed, that means as soon as the clock starts ticking, it's that speed. As, so whatever its initial speed is, that's what a is. So that tells you that a is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction. Cool. Uh, let's keep this going. So then we can say, well, maybe it's better to write x dot is equal to dx dt, which is equal to vix. Okay, multiply both sides by dt. Get dx is equal to vix dt, integrate both sides. We're going to go from some initial position to some final position. So you'll, you'll notice that we started off extremely general. We said that there was no air resistance in this problem, but that's the one, uh, that's the one assertion that we made at first. So we made no real assumptions about the physics until we got to this point. Okay? Um, and now I'm imposing some more, saying that there might be some displacement, but really that's even keeping it more general. Clock starts at zero, so we're integrating time from zero to some other time, which tells us that um, we have 
xf minus xi is equal to vixt. In other words, delta x is equal to vixt. Okay, so that's, that's effectively one of the kinematic equations here that we just derived using the Lagrangian formalism. And now we have this, now we got this little differential equation -y boy. Uh, so let's go ahead and write this out. So we got y double prime, or y double dot, is equal to minus g. Same thing, we're going to integrate both sides, which tells us that y dot is equal to minus gt uh, plus some constant that we can call, we call it a here, let's call this b. And then, well, let's think. So now, now let's think about some more physics that's going on. At t equals zero, this velocity should be the initial velocity, right? That's kind of the definition of an initial velocity. It's when the clock first starts ticking, what is the velocity in the y direction? So when t is equal to zero, the initial velocity should be the initial velocity. In other words, um, at t equals zero, y double, or y prime should equal v i y. So let's substitute t equals zero into this equation. So we get v i y is equal to minus g times zero plus b, which tells us that b is equal to v i y. Okay, let's go ahead and substitute that in here. That says that y prime, y dot, y dot sorry, is equal to uh, minus g t plus v i y. And then we're going to integrate both sides again. So we get, in the same, uh, let's, let's be thorough. So this is dy dt is equal to viy minus gt. Again, let's multiply both sides by dt, which gives us dy is equal to viy minus gt dt. Integrate both sides. Uh, so that's going to be, it's called yi, yf, and this can be integrated from 0 to t again, and so that's going to tell us that delta y is equal to, well the integral of this is going to be a vit. This, this is a subscript by the way, it's not saying vi times y, it's, it's the initial velocity in the y direction, minus one half g t squared. Cool. And just like that, from starting with Euler Lagrange equations, well, really starting with just the Lagrangian of the system, we came up with two kinematic equations. Hope you guys found this video helpful. I think you see now why you don't use Lagrangian as the jumping off point when solving a projectile motion problem. Because when you solve a projectile motion problem, you normally start with the kinematic equations. But where those equations come from is usually Newton's second law. So this whole video was a means of showing you that you can also get to the same thing by using a, by using a Lagrangian. Let me know in the comments section if I should tackle the Hamiltonian version next, or if you'd like to see Hamiltonian maybe applied to something different. And I'll see you guys there.